A technician is replacing a standard hard disk drive with an NVMe solid state drive and a modern laptop. After physically installing the drive, they find that the BIOS does not recognize it. The laptop supports M.2 drives and the SSD is seated correctly. What is the most likely reason the NVMe drive is not detected? Three, two, one. So most likely NVMe is unsupported in legacy boot mode. SSDs require UEFI boot mode to be properly recognized during startup. Legacy BIOS, also known as CSM, does not support devices for boot. The drive does not need formatting to be detected by the BIOS. Power is provided through the M.2 slot and SATA compatibility would be a different physical connector or protocol mismatch. You are helping a user who is experiencing frequent application crashes after installing a new printer driver after rolling back the driver. The issue stops. However, the user insists on using the latest driver for additional features. You need to install the updated driver without crashing the system. What should you do first? Make sure you guys stay around to the end of the video. At the end of the video, I actually give you guys um, access to a free training that shows you, it's about a 15 minute training that actually shows you exactly how to pass this certification, pass Network Plus and Security Plus, uh, which are basically the three most popular certifications in the industry in 90 days and get uh, a job, right? So it's free training, uh, if it looks good to you, um, you can watch that training and then after the training is done, you have the option and the opportunity, I should say, to join our program to do that even quicker. So you should have enough time to think about that. Three, two, one. All right. Check Event Viewer for driver conflict errors. Event Viewer can provide detailed logs without the sort. <laughs> the source of system instability. It helps determine if the driver conflicts with another service, application, or hardware component. Compatibility mode or admin rights won't resolve deeper system conflicts. Disabling antivirus is risky and doesn't address root causes. Even though it sounds like I'm about to have a damn seizure when I'm reading these questions, I made these questions if you were asking, okay, where do you get these questions from? And if you want um, questions just like this, if you need more practice questions, more practice tests, we have a bunch of videos uh, on the channel that go through A+, Net+, Security+, CISSP, uh, PMP, every damn certification you can think of. And then if you need even more assistance than that, we have um, a practice test vault with over 4,000 questions that you can use at any time. If you want access to that, just click the link in the description and you can uh, get access to that. All right, so we're about five questions in. In the comments, let me know. Are you excited about taking A plus? Uh, when are you taking A plus? Um, did you know about A plus before you saw this video? And kind of what's your end goal, right? Why are you getting A plus? Uh, what is it going to do for you? And um, as far as uh, getting A plus, like what are you hoping you know happens? Okay, I get certified, and then what's going to happen for you? A user is unable to connect to any websites, but can ping public IP addresses like 8.8.8.8. .8 the user is connected via Ethernet and has no proxy settings enabled. Other users on the same network have no issues. What is the most likely cause of the problem? What's the most likely cause? Three, two, one. So the most likely cause is a DNS server misconfiguration. So DNS, 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 what does DNS stand for? We just talked about acronyms, put it in the comments. What does DNS stand for? DNS, right? What does DNS stand for? Because not knowing what that stands for or not knowing what other acronyms stand for is going to make this exam so much harder than it needs to be. 
The ability to reach IP addresses but not domain name points to a DNS resolution issue. The device may be set to use a faulty or unreachable DNS server. A faulty cable would block all connectivity. The gateway is functioning since IP traffic works and MAC filtering would prevent any connection at all. So MAC filtering is uh, when you actually are filtering the physical devices, right? So it would actually look at the MAC address, which is the physical address of a device. And if that MAC address isn't on the list, it will get filtered out. A company has received multiple complaints about unattended laptops being accessed by unauthorized individuals in shared workspaces. You are asked to enhance endpoint security, especially in areas where users frequently leave their devices temporarily. The client does not want to hinder productivity or require users to log in manually every time they step away for a few minutes. However, there must be a way to ensure that systems auto lock when idle. You need a solution that's both user friendly and secure and easily applied across all company laptops. What is the best way to achieve this? Yep. That's right. Shit just got real. You was probably feeling real good. Oh, yeah, I got this. No, I did that on purpose. Right. So those first couple of questions um, were easy. You're confident in something. Now it's time for the real deal. So what do you think the answer to this question is? If this has been valuable to you, make sure that you uh, like this video. And like I said, just uh, leave a comment in the description. Just let me know uh, why you take an A plus and when you plan on taking A plus. Uh, if you take an A plus, uh, did you pass it? Did you fail it? Are we working on core one or core two? And uh, what you hoping that does uh, for you? Another thing is um, all the uh, questions on the exam. Are pretty much scenario based right so you may get a ones and twosies that are like what is this what is that but most of them are going to be uh, similar to uh, questions like this where it's going to be a scenario something happened and you need to uh, come out with uh, the best solution to uh, whatever that scenario is three two one Set a short screen timeout with password protection. Setting a screen timeout with password protection ensures that after a brief period of inactivity, the laptop automatically locks and requires authentication to resume use. This approach improves security while maintaining a seamless user experience, especially when combined with fingerprint or facial recognition. A technician installs a new productivity application on a user Windows 11 laptop. Before we get any further, have we upgraded to Windows 11? And if you did, how is the experience? How, how are you liking it? I have not, and I don't think I am, but let me know. Or, or you guys, I know how to use it and all that type of shit, but have you upgraded to Windows 11? And if so, how do you like it? A technician installs a new productivity application on a user Windows 11 laptop. Shortly after installation, the system begins displaying a black screen after the Windows logo during boot. Although the fan and keyboard lights remain active, safe mode is accessible and no hardware issues are detected through built-in diagnostics. The user urgently needs their system restored without a full reinstall, and other applications must remain intact. What is the most efficient and safe step to begin troubleshooting this issue? Three, two, one. Run SFC and DISM from safe mode. So system file checker and the deployment imaging service and management tool can be run from safe mode to scan for and repair corrupted or missed them 
missing system files. Since the user can access safe mode, it suggests the core OS is intact, but a critical system component likely related to the display or application installation is causing instability in normal mode. These tools can fix the underlying problem without affecting personal files or installed applications. Now, right now, you should be seeing some videos pop up about A+, plus, about getting a job, all this type of stuff. You can click on one of those videos and it'll help you pass certs, get jobs, get prepared, so on and so forth. If you are looking to get any of these practice test questions in the description, if you're looking to join our beginner course in the description, if you're looking to join the Zero to IT Pro program in the description. Other than that, I'll see you in class.